Okay, the new game is interesting one, and it's called up. It's a playing bricks. It can be played by any any number of bricks. Let me just say this. So let's start with an example. Pick up bricks. Five bricks have been stacked on the ground. So you have five bricks. The two players A and B take turns picking up either one or two bricks from the pile. The player who picks up the last brick loses a dollar. The other player wins a dollar. So let's describe the game in a three form. So in the beginning of the game, one has two choices. A, player A. Whether to pick up one brick or to pick up two, big, two bricks. Let's say that he pick up two. Then B can pick up one or can pick up two. If she, took, she picks up two, two plus two, four, A has no choice but to take the last one. Who took the last one? A, he loses one. B wins one. If when, when A picks up two, A a B picks up one, then A can go for one or for two. If, if he goes for two, he loses the game because two plus one plus two, he took the last one, he gets minus one. If he pick up one, then two plus one plus one, four, there is one brick left. B must take it, it's the one, and uh, he wins. He gets one, she gets minus one. Suppose that where A goes for one. Then B here can either go for two or go for one. If she goes for two, three bricks have been taken out. Then A can take either one or two. If he takes the two, the game ends, he loses one. If he takes one, one plus two plus one, four, B has to take the one. He wins, she loses. Great. But B can here takes only one, so one plus one, in which case A can take two leaving the last one to B, or he can take, and in which case he wins, or he takes one here, three, and B can go two to lose, because the, he, she will be the last one, or takes one, in which case A must, uh, must take the last one. So this is the description of the game, and we have to analyze it, uh, and the, the way to do it is to analyze it uh, by backward induction. So it doesn't matter, however, because I think I here uh, did not go by by a certain order, but let's say I have, let's start here. A has no choice; he must take the one. There are no two choices, only one. So let's say uh, let's do it slowly. A here must go here. If the game comes here, A loses the game. He gets minus one; she gets one. So now B here, I can go for B or I can go to the last one everywhere. Let's see what I, I chose B. So B here can go one or two. If she goes for one, she wins. If she goes for two, she loses. So clearly she's going to go here to win and to get one. Good. So now I can go for instance here. B has no choice, only one choice, so he must take it. She must take it and lose the game. Now I can go to A, I can continue down. Let's see what I did. I continue down. I could solve now to see if I want to go like this or I want to go like this. But let's do this. So here, B, if she takes the break, she has no choice but to take the break. I can look on A here if I want, and if he takes two, he loses. If he takes one, he wins. Up, we'll come later on, you see? The last one here, B has no choice. And the last one here, A has no choice, only one. Good, so let's see where we are. So let's uh, look here. It doesn't matter, I go one, uh, one step backwardly. Eh? If I go, if I go one, I win. If I go mine uh, two, I'm I'm losing. So clearly, I'm going to one to win. Here, if I go for two, I lose. It's a. If I go for one, I win. So clearly, I go for one. Good. Here, 
I could do it before, doesn't matter. If I go for two, I win. If I go for one, it continues like this, I lose. So clearly I, go, I pick up two. B here. Doesn't matter what she does. Look, if she goes like this, she loses. If she goes like this, she loses. So she can choose whatever she wants. I put two arrows. Because she can do whatever she wants. But what will be the outcome here? One wins. Now let's do the B here. B says, if I go down, I win. If I go up to take one break, I lose. So she's going to go with two. Now A has to make a decision. Should I pick up one and doesn't matter if it goes like this or go like this, I win or two and I lose. Obviously, it's going to go like this. So uh, what is the outcome of the game? A wins and two loses. But there are two ways to win. I mean, in both cases, he wins. What is the... So first of all, in the first move, a takes one brick. Now, if two takes two, one takes one, and B has no choice but to take one. If B takes one, he takes two, and B has no choice to take the last one. That's it. So with five bricks, one uh, has a winning strategy by starting with one brick. Very nice. By the way, this game can be played not only with five bricks, but with any number of bricks. If you like, 187 bricks. And the question is, uh, so we did all this, and the question is how we proceed the game. So we move now to four bricks. Okay, let's move uh, to... Uh, the problem with four bricks. Can we conclude that the first mover is always the advantage? No. So let's uh, look on a simpler problem with four bricks. So A can start taking one brick or two. If he takes two, B can take two or one, leaving one to A. If he takes one, B can take two and then A will take one. Remember, total of four breaks, the last one to take loses the game. Here, who loses? The last one to take, A, minus one. A can go one, B can go one, and then A can either ta take two and lose, or it can take one, and B will take one. Now, B with the last one to take one, B loses. Okay, so let's work it backwardly. Okay, so... Uh, B here has no choice but to take. A here knows that if he goes two, he loses the game. If he goes one, he wins the game. So clearly he goes for one. Now B, or A here first, this is clear. A has to go to, there is no choice here but to take one brick and to lose. So B has to take a decision. Should I take one and continue until uh, she loses? So I, I will take two and then I'll win because A must take the last one. So clearly, okay, first here down A. So A must take it and now B. Uh, B can go for two or one. If she wants to win, she has to go for two. Okay, then what happens B here? B knows if she takes one, she wins. If she takes two, she loses. So she takes one. Now, A, whatever A does, take one, he loses. Take two, he loses. So uh, two wins no matter what. So A can go either, I mean, I can put, he can go both ways. So what happens? I mean, uh, what is the, the winning strategy of two? If A takes two, she takes one, leaving A to take the last one. If A takes one, she takes two, leaving A to take the last one. So clearly, very simple, two wins. And what about six? I don't think I have it here. Just a second. Okay, we'll come to that. But I can tell you, with six, one wins. So with four, two wins. With five, one wins. With six, one win. One win. Is there a rule? Slowly. 
The follower B has a winning strategy. If uh, we said it, if A picks up one brick, B picks up two bricks, and if A picks up and wins, if A picks up one brick, sorry, I say if A by one brick, correct, um, and if A picks up two bricks, then B will pick up one brick, and then A will have to take the last one. The second mover here has the advantage. So is it true that always the first the, the first mover has an advantage? Here, for instance, it is not. Problem. Can you analyze the general case with many with any number of bricks? The previous example shows that B has a winning strategy if A is left with four bricks. In a game with n bricks, if B can take the n minus four, you know what? You can read it. I don't want to get. It's not really um, very material to what we do, but this. Uh, is actually an explanation of how to find the optimal strategy, no matter how many bricks we have. But let me just say the full, I just tell you what uh, how to do. And it says here, you take the number of bricks and you divide it by three. If it has, uh, uh, the, if after dividing n by 3, there is a remainder of 1, then 2 wins. Otherwise, 1 wins. Let me give an example. 7 bricks. Divide 7 by 3. What is that? You get 2, and what is the remainder? 1. 2 wins. Divide, uh, let's say now, 8. Divide 8 by 3. It is 2. The remainder is 2. Namely, 1 wins. So again, one wins if there is no remainder, let's say 150. You divide by 3, 50, no remainder. There is no remainder. It is exactly divisible by 3, then one wins. So either it is divisible by 3, or uh, after dividing it by 3, you're left with a remainder of 2, and one wins. A remainder of 1, 2 wins. And there is an explanation here which uh, you can read uh, for, uh, for your benefit. Next, look at the, the following example, and let's find out uh, what is the equilibrium out and backward the induction equilibrium or perfect equilibrium of this game. It's very complicated, it looks like, but let me tell you, uh, it is very easy to figure it out. So uh, let's start. By the way, we have here three players. The payoff of let's say here, the payoff of player one is three. Here, the payoff of player two, the payoff of player two is four. The payoff of player five is of player three is five. Ha. Okay, let's look here for instance. The payoff of player one is negative four. Of two is four. Of three is one. Okay, now let's analyze backwardly how we analyze the game. So let's look on this node. One can go either W or X. If he goes W, he gets 4. If he goes X, he gets minus 1. So he's best off going W. To get 4 and not minus 1. Let's look on player 2. So I have to compare the payoff of player 2 if she goes Y, Z, or A prime. If she goes Y, she gets 3. If she goes Z, she gets 1. If she goes A, a prime, she gets 2. So she compares 3 to 1 to 2, and therefore she takes the y that gives her 3. Very good. Let's take another node. Here, I could take this one if I want, but doesn't matter. I can analyze it now, because if 3 goes p, the game continue y, and he gets 0. If 3 takes o, the game continued W, and 3 gets negative 2. So he preferred to go P. Okay. I take this out. Uh, and then uh, takes another one. Let's say here. 2 can go either U or V. If she goes U, she gets 0. If she goes V, she gets 2. Clearly, she will go for V. Great. Let's continue. Now here, the game... 
I mean, if Sri has to take a decision here, he has to compare four to five. He obviously, he prefers five, and therefore he will choose T. Great. And now let's look on one here. He can go left. Should he can go M? He can go N. If he goes left. The game continues here and he gets three. If he goes M, he gets two. If he goes N, the game continues here and he gets four. So he has to compare three to two to four and therefore he's best off going N. Great. Okay, let's continue. Now I can take two here or... or uh, work it out here or here, but let's say I, I can do it here. Why? Two here has two choices. Going F and continue P and Y to get three, or going E and the game continues like this where she gets two. So two has to compare taking three or taking two, she goes for three. Great. Okay, let's let's check next. Now I look at one here and one here. He can go Q or R. If he goes Q, he gets negative two. If he goes to R, he gets zero. So he prefers to go R. So we put there on R. Now two here. If she she can go K or J. If she goes J, she gets minus three. If she goes K, the game continue R and she gets one. So obviously she prefers one and therefore she will take K. Nice. What next? Next two here. She has three choices. I, H, G. If she goes to I, she gets five. If she takes H, she gets two. If she goes G, she gets zero. So clearly she will choose I. Now we can do uh, what player three here can do. Three, 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 if he goes D, he gets two. If he goes C, he gets negative two. So clearly he would like to choose D. Now the last one is one. One says, if I go B, the game will continue like this, I'll get minus one. If I'll go A, the game continues like this, and I get zero. I prefer zero to minus one. And therefore, one here will take A. And what is the equilibrium outcome? Zero, one, two. So in equilibrium of this game, not only equilibrium, but the perfect equilibrium, the one that is obtained by backward induction, A, the perfect equilibrium is zero for one, one for two, two for three. Okay, that's the analysis of this game. And now what are the strategies? So the strategies I should write what everyone is doing in every one of his or her decision notes. Let me start with one. One takes a decision here. Okay, let me just finish with it first to say, okay. A decision here. One is taking a decision here. So here, that's one. Let's circle the decisions of one. Here, here, here. That's it. I think that that's it. So how many decision points? I think that I'm missing one. No. Um, and here. Okay. So here it takes A. Player one. Uh, here it takes uh, R. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter the order. As long as you tell me in every decision out of one what it does. Here it takes N. And here he takes W. So the strategy of one is consists of four moves. A, R, N, and W. And each one in the 
the right decision node. In this decision node of one, he goes A. In this decision node of one, he goes R. In this decision node of one, he goes N. In this decision node, he gets W. So that is described by four choices, each one in each one of the decision nodes of the player. We go to player two. Let me circle. Where is the decision of two? Two can make a decision here, 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 here. So two has five decisions to take. So let me go from here. Here she takes I. Next, here she takes K. Next, here she takes F. Here she takes V. And here she takes Y. So Y and V. It doesn't matter if I write V or Y. It is, I mean, it is clear enough to understand in every decision node what she does. So this is the strategy of, of player two is what she does in each one of her five decision nodes. How many decision nodes player three has? I can see here. Okay, I can see here. And I can see here. Three. So let's start here. Here it goes D. It says D. Here it gets go T. Here. So T. And here he chooses P. So these are... Okay, now we figure out the strategy of each one of the players. Player 1 is A, R, N, W. Player 2 is I, K, F, Y, V. And player 3 is D, 2, D. T P. This is the perfect equilibrium strategies. The perfect equilibrium outcome is the payoff in equilibrium. 0, 1, 2, which is circle here. See, it's very simple. You go backwardly and you should not have any problem to figure out how to solve the game. Next, and this is a little bit more complicated example is consider the following two-person game in a tree form and find the perfect equilibrium of this game. P-E, perfect equilibrium. So look, I need to go backwardly. So the game, first of all, let me describe you the game. Okay? Um, so player one can go A. If he goes A, there is a lottery. Or, I don't know, God decides if the game goes up or down. It really depends on the story. Something happened with probability 30%, 3 over 10, and something happened with probability 7 over 10. So I don't get into the verbal story behind it. It's just we analyze, we know that if player 1 goes A, then there is some uncertainty with some probability 3 over 10. The game continues up, and with some probability 7 over 10, they should add up to 1, he goes down. If he goes up, then 2 can choose to go E, in which case <coughs> 1 obtains zero, uh, 10 and 2 obtains 0. And 2 can go F, in which case 1 gets 0 and she gets 20. If the game goes D, then 2 can go either G or H. If she goes G, she gets uh, 30, okay, and 1 gets 0. If she goes H, she gets 10, 1 gets 40. If 1 decides to go to B, then again there is some uncertainty with some probability it's up. The nature selects up 1, I called it, with probability half, and nature selects down 2 with probability half. In which case, if nature, chance, God selected to go up, 1 gets negative 10 and 2 gets 40. If nature, N for nature, if nature selects to go down, 1 gets 30 and she gets negative 30. How to analyze this game? So first of all, Let's do backward induction in places we can do it. For instance, at this point, 2 compares 0 to 20 and she will go 20. At this point, 
to compare 30 to 10 and she will go 30. So I know exactly what will happen and therefore I would be able, we'll do it, I would be able to replace all this one by some expected payoff. Why? With probability 30%, 3 over 10, the game continues here, 1 gets 0 and 2 gets 20. With probability 70%, the game continues here because I know what 2 will do, 1 gets 0 and 2 gets 30. So actually I could replace it by the average, the expected. What is the expected value? With probability 3 tenths, 1 gets 0 and 2 gets 20. And with probability 7 over 10, the game continues here, but she plays G as, and therefore 0, 30. So I can find it out. So this is average. So I have 3 tenths of 0 plus 7 tenths of 0 is 0. Here I have 3 tenths of 20 for, for 2 plus 7 tenths of 30. So what is this? Uh, the 10 and the 20, I mean, I, I take the 0 out. I have 6 from here and 3 from here is 21. So I'm getting 0 and 27. So I can replace all this game by putting 0, 27. You, we'll see it in a second. Now, if one goes here to B, then this game I can replace with probability half. I'm getting 30 for 1 and negative 30 for 2. Plus, with probability half, I'm getting minus 10 for 1 and 40 for 2. What is this? I have, let's do slowly the first one. Half of 30, 15. And half of minus 10 is negative 5. So it's 15. Minus 5 for 1. What about 2? Half times negative 30, which is negative 15, plus half times 40, which is plus 20. So this is 10 for 1 and 5 for 2. Okay? So I can replace all this by what? By this, by this payoff. 10 and 5. And this I can replace by the payoff... 0 and 27. So actually this B, this B game goes like this. If I play A, I'm getting 0 for me, 27 for player 2. If I go B, then it is 10 and 5. And I'm player 1 here. So I should decide to go B to get 10 or to go A to get 0. This is the outcome of the game. Okay, so I replace the game, every one of these sub-games, by the expected payoff that I get. After saying all this, let us now see, I mean, let us now follow the entire uh, things in a nicer handwriting, instead of the handwriting. Okay. So here it is. Let me start. So first of all, 2 here goes to F. Why? Because she gets 20, which is more than 10. And here she goes, here she goes to, uh, uh, to G because 30 is more than 10. Okay, so she went to F because 20 is more than 10. She goes to G because 30 is more than 10. Sorry, she goes to F because 20 is more than 0. She goes to G because 30 is more than 10. So here are the arrows. So nature here, I can replace taking into account that player 2 plays F and G here in these two points, and two nodes. If one chooses A, if the expected payoff of the players are what? With probability 3 over 10. The game continues here, and they get 0 for 1, 20 for 2. And with probability 7 over 10, player 1 gets 0, and she gets 30. So now I can uh, compare to see what's going on. So this is 3 tenths times 0 is 0. 3 tenths times 20 is 6. Here, 7 10 times 0 is 0, 7, ti 7 tenths times 30 is 21. 
So 0 plus 0 is 0, 6 plus 21 is 27. So all this game I can replace by 0, 27. What about here? If he goes B, also if one chooses B, the expected payoffs of the players are what? With probability, if he goes B, with probability half, minus 10, 40, with probability half, minus 10, 40, and with probability half, 30 minus 30. Probability half, 30 minus 30. So what is half times minus 10 is negative 5. What is half times 40? It is 20. What is half times 30? 15. What is half times negative 30? Minus 15. Now I go minus 5 plus 15 is 10. 20 minus 15 is 5. So I can replace this game by 10 and 5 and this game by 0, 0, 27 and 10 and 5. Okay? As you can see, that's what happened. And therefore, I mean, 1 is very easy after you do it. 10 is better than 0. 1 goes B. The perfect equilibrium is player 1 chooses B. He just has two strategies, going A or going B. And the strategy of 2 is to choose F if nature chooses up. You choose F here if nature chooses up. And you choose G if nature chooses down. And if nature chooses down. The actual perfect equilibrium outcome, actual, it is either because what happens? Uh, it when you go, um, so you can get, he goes B. So actually what will happen is that either the outcome will be this or the outcome will be this. However, the expected payoff is 10-5. So, I mean, player one based his decision to go B purely on his expected payoff. He does, he compares his expected payoff here is 0, his expected payoff here is 10. So he goes for B, but he will never get 10. Actually, he will get either 30 or negative 10, but the average of the two, half half, is actually what? 10. So the expected payoff for 1 is 10 and for 2 is 5, but what they will go, they, what they will get actually is either 30 and negative 30 or 10, negative 10 and 40. So on expectation in this, what, actually what happened is exactly what I described and nice. The set of all Nash equilibrium points of this game, we convert, if you want to know what is the set of all equilibrium, we find one equilibrium. What is the, the equilibrium? Player one goes B, as you can see here, goes B. And player two goes here F and G. So the, uh, the, the strategy of one is B, the strategy of two is F comma G. Is it, uh, so actually how many strategies two has? Two has four strategies. What are the strategies? Either E and G, not two plus two, but two times two. If he would have, if she would have another one here, it will be three times two, six strategies. So you always multiply the number of choices that two has here times the number of choices that she has here. So it can be E with G, E with H, F with G, F with H. The sensible one is FG. So if, if I if I want to find out all the equilibrium points of this game, I have to convert this game that you see here to strategic game. So I, here I put again the game. So notice that player 2 has 4 strategies. E here and G here. E here and H here. Okay. Now with F. F here and G here. And finally F here with H here. All the 4 combinations. And if I would have here I let's say then it will be 6. E with G, E with uh, I, E with uh, H, F with G, F with I, F with H. 
six, three times two. Okay, multiply them, but I don't have I here, so I have only four. So if I want to write down the table, I have to put two strategies for player one, A and B, and four strategies of player two. But we have to be careful about the payoff that we put there. It is a little bit complicated, but not too much. Suppose that player one chooses A. Let us compute the expected payoffs for each one of the four strategies. So if player one goes here, where well, it depends. If I go E and G, so if I go E and G, player one goes eight. Suppose. Then one strategy is going E and going G. So I have to take three tenths times this plus seven tenths times this. Three tenths times ten zero plus seven tenths times zero three. Thirty, sorry. So what is it? This is three tenths times ten is three. Plus seven tenths times zero, it remains three. Three tenths times zero is zero. Seven tenths times thirty is twenty-one. Zero plus twenty-one is twenty-one. So uh, I know that if I go A, I'm player one, and you, player two, go E G. That's what we are going to get. Next, suppose that the strategy is not. Yeah, we always uh, here we think of player one goes A. Suppose that she goes E here and H here. What happens? So with probability 3 tenths, we get 10 H. With probability 7 tenths, we get 40. She goes what? E and H. And so, uh, and with probability 7 tenths, 40 and 10. What is the expectation? So 3 tenths times 10 is 3 plus 7 tenths plus 7 tenths times 40 is 28. So 28 plus 3 is 31. 3 tenths times time 0 is 0, plus 7 tenths times 10 is 7. So I'm getting this. Good, I have another 2 to go. If that we compute already, if she goes F and G, he goes A. Then what happens? With probability 3 tenths is 0, 20, and probability 7 tenths, okay, now it is F and G, I said, okay. With probability 7 tenths is 0, 20, eh, 0, 30, again. With probability 3 tenths, she goes F, 0, 20. With probability 7 tenths, she goes G, and 0, 30. So 3 tenths times 0 is 0, plus 7 tenths times 0 is 0, it's 0. 3 tenths times 20 is 6, and 7 tenths times 30 is 21, altogether 27. Great. Last one, F and H. With probability 3 tenths 0, 20, with probability 7 tenths 40, 10. So 3 tenths times 0 is 0, plus 7 tenths times 40 is 28. F for player 2, 3 tenths times 20 is 6, plus 7 tenths times 10 is 7, 6 plus 7 is 13. Great, we found out what happens if he goes A. If one chooses B, the expected payoffs are... And that's no matter what two does, because one goes, one goes B, so just a matter of the, so we know, we computed it. It is with probability half, negative 10 and 40, with probability half, 30 and minus 30. And when you multiply, we did it before, 10 and 5. Now I can find that, let's move to the table. The table is, a with E G with E H with F G with F H. If A if one goes to B, ten five no matter what two does. If one goes to B, two it's immaterial what two does because we don't get them. So it is ten and five. So ten and five, ten and five, ten and five, ten and five doesn't matter what two does. However, if one goes A, we compute it. EG is 321, 31, 7, 0, 27, 28, 13. All this is written here. 
So this describes the game, okay? This is the strategic form of this game, of the big game. So I, I can replay, I remember what is the, what is the um, perfect equilibrium strategy. O, o, uh, one goes B and two goes F here and G here. But there may be other strategies, but if there are other equilibrium strategies, it must be that they must be with weakly dominated strategies. Let's see. So compute. How do I compute all the equilibrium? I compare 21, 7, 27, 13. I designate this. 5, 5, 5, I designate all of them. If she goes EG, 3 or 10, 10. If she goes EH, 30 and, uh, and 10, 30. 0 and 10, 10. 28 and 10, 28. Actually, there are two equilibrium, uh, two equilibrium points. Both of them gives the same payoff, but there are two equilibrium. This one with F and G, which is the right one. So um, they do whatever I did. So let me take. And so you see that there are two equilibrium points. There are two Nash equilibrium points. One is this which is non-sensible, we'll talk about that in a second, and the other one is this, which was the perfect equilibrium. Remember, let me see if I have the tree. No, I don't have the tree, so uh, let me go back. Remember, two here, she compares 0 to 20, she goes F. Here she goes, compares G to H, 30 to 10, she goes G. So the perfect equilibrium is he goes B, but she here go, go F and G. So this is F and G, and he goes B. This is the perfect equilibrium. This is the non-perfect equilibrium. It is true that both of them gives 10 to player 1 and 5 to player 2 because he goes B. But this one is sensible, and this one is not. Why this one is not? Because look on this compared to this. 21 is less than 27 for player 2, and 5 is like 5. So EG is weakly dominated strategy. It is dominated by what? By, uh, uh, by F and G. Also note, also this one is dominated 7 and 5, is less than 27 and 5. Equal here, but smaller here. And um, also this one is dominated. 13 is smaller than 27, 5 is like 5. FG dominates, weakly dominates all other three uh, strategies. So it is clear that she has to play FG and he has to play B. The second equilibrium is perfect, but not the first. In the first equilibrium, what is the first equilibrium? Um, EG and B. Okay, let me go back. EG and B. EG and B. Um, she is trying, uh, so actually, why this is, I tell you why, because it, no matter, it's true that she gets for EG, you see EG, she gets 3 and 21, so this becomes 3 and 21, this we figured it out, that was 10 and 5, that one was 10 and 5. And so she, here they play, for instance, uh, for player 2 here to play E to get 0, not to play F, it doesn't make sense. However, I mean, um, if he goes B, if he decides to go B, uh, uh, she cannot do anything. Okay? She cannot, it doesn't matter. She doesn't matter what she does, she gets 5. Okay? 
And um, uh, so if, if he goes B, doesn't matter what they do, okay? But for him not to deviate to A, okay? Uh, for him not to deviate for A, he should get a small number, okay? So for instance, with this 3 and 21, if he deviates to A, he's going to get only 3, okay? And uh, therefore, uh, he's, um, he's better off playing down to get 10. If, for instance, he would do EH, okay? EH is not an equilibrium but because then he prefers, he's get, getting 31 and not 10.5. Then he would prefer to move to A. However, if he moves to A, EH is not an equilibrium. If he moves to A, it's a E uh, for player 2 is a, is a non-sensible. Why to go for 0 and not for 20? So the fact that this is an equilibrium is because he gets here low and he, he doesn't have incentive to go A. In what places he doesn't have an incentive to go to A, to deviate from B to A? Only if he, he gets, sorry, it was 5 and 10. Only when he gets less than 5, he doesn't want to deviate. He gets here less than 5 and here. This is the perfect equilibrium. This is the other equilibrium, the non-sensible equilibrium. So there are two equilibrium points. And if you want to analyze the game, you have to move to the strategic form of the game. And then you can see all the equilibrium points. So again, in the first equilibrium, player 2 chooses E when nature selects up. This is not sensible action. Choosing F is better action for 2. Nevertheless, even if 2 chooses E and not uh, and not F, player 1 is best off still with B, then with A, and the outcome is the same. So don't uh, be, uh, I mean, the fact that they get the same outcome, 10 and 5, oh, 10 and 5, so I, I told you 5 and 10. Uh, let me, the beginning I wrote it correctly, but it doesn't matter, 10 and 5. So he doesn't, like to move to A as long as the number, the expected payoff here is below 10. It's 3 and 0. If he goes, if it's EH, the, he will move, he will deviate because he will get 31. And if it's FH, he will deviate because he gets in 28, more than 10. In these two places, 3 and 0, it's less than 10, and therefore he has no incentive to move from B to A. Okay. Um, I suggest to uh, make a break here and continue later on. Thank you so much for listening until here. Bye-bye.